Good afternoon and welcome to the third of the fifth of our Film Club Olympic webcasts. We're here today with Jess from the Wirral. Jess is from Prenton High School for Girls and Jess has come all the way down from the Wirral today on the train. So thank you Jess for joining us. Um, my name's Katie, I work in the marketing team at Film Club. I'm now going to hand you over to Jess who's going to introduce our guests. Hi, today we're joined by Sam Blair, director of Personal Best, James Ellington, a sprinter who features in the film, and John Powell, James's coach. Hi, guys. Um, the first question is for Sam. How did you come about creating the film? Yeah, it was, uh, it was quite a long process. It took about five years, all in all. It started out as a short, a short film when I was studying. I was at the National Film School and I made a 17-minute film about sprinters called Sprinters uh, and that did quite well, went to film festivals and, uh, and we sort of realised that because the Olympics were coming there'd, there'd be a bigger film as possible so it took a f bit of time to to get the money to make the bigger film but uh, that's kind of what led us to this moment now uh, releasing it before the Olympics and trying to tell stories that make people understand really what it takes to, to be an athlete. So you got pretty lucky with the Olympics, really. Good timing. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, it it wasn't on my mind with the short. No. Um, but, hang on a minute. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm onto something. <laughs> um, James and John, how did you get involved in the film? Well, basically, as Sam, Sam said before, he, he'd done his 17-minute short film. Um, called Sprinters, and I was partly involved in that because I was filming my old training group. So Sam approached my coach John, um, I'd say what, a year and a half, two years ago now? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Um, approached John about obviously this up and coming film that he's looking to do, and I think we had a real appropriate group to do it with because we had a mixture of top level guys, um, guys that had just started the sport, and people that were just in the middle, of, on the brink of making it, and that's, that's basically how he kind of come around to filming us. I think if you watch the film you'll see the two individuals, James being one obviously, who's now sort of broken through to the top level going to the Olympic Games. Um, and there's also another young man called Amado who uh, turns 18 at the end of the film, but uh, he sort of represents the, the sort of introductory end of the sport um, and what it takes to actually get going and you know the all, all the sort of trials and yeah. tribulations associated with that. Um, it's not easy at that end of the sport, let alone at uh, the level that Jones has got to. Well, you've already answered our next question then. Yeah. Which was... Well, you can answer um, it, James, can you tell us about the good news you got since making the film? Since making the film, obviously my aim was to go to this year's Olympic trials and manage to come top, top two so I could qualify for the Olympics, which, which I did. I managed to come first. So um, I'm one place ahead of last year. So you're in Team... Yeah, team yeah. Team. So I'm going to the Olympics to do the 200 metres and compete for Team GB. Wow. Real Olympiad in the film club building. Yeah. Yeah. Like Not forgetting the relay as well. Yeah, yeah and the relay. <laughs> Where and when did you get the news? The news that I was in the team? Yeah. Um, well, basically, they got selection criteria. So I knew I'd hit the criteria because as long as you've got an A standard time and you come top two in the trials, that guarantees your place in the team. So I pretty much knew as soon as I crossed the line I was guaranteed. But obviously you can't you can't say nothing until it's official. So a week later they when they select the team officially. But you knew. Yeah, I knew. Must have been a really good feeling. And we've got a schools question next. Um, Naomi from Ashton Community Science College asks, um, Sam, were you nervous the first time you watched the film? Hello, Naomi. Uh, yeah. It, by the time I'd finished the film, I'd watched it hundreds of times, that's yeah. the thing. But then the moment that you show it, first of all, to the people who were in the film, it's incredibly nerve-wracking because you you want them to be happy with it. Uh, you're portraying their lives. Um, so that's very nerve-wracking. And then the next thing you do is you show it to the general public in the cinema and people pay to see the film. Which is even scarier. Which is scary as well because you want them to enjoy it and be entertained and, and it's very nerve-wracking but uh, I've had a very positive experience mm. showing it and showing it and doing Q&As after screenings and getting feedback, it's been great. Cool. 
Um, the next question's from another school, Chadwood Primary School. They ask Sam again, how old were you when you first started making films? Oh. I mean, I made films with my friends when I was a, when I was a kid. My friend had a, a video camera. And I had a friend who wanted to be a stuntman. <laughs> so we would film him Amazing. jumping off things, uh, doing things actually I won't talk about because yeah. it's probably not exactly. advisable. Sort of but I always liked cameras and filming. Um, but I made my first, I'd say my first proper film uh, at the end of my university. Uh, and that was just a small documentary. Um, it was actually about my grandparents. But that's what started me making films seriously. But I think the, the thing now is that uh, I think anyone can make a film now with the technology that's around. Or just on your phone. Or... On your phone or whatever. I'd encourage anyone to, if you're interested in a film, there's kind of no excuses not to make one. That's right. I'd agree with that. Mm. Um, sporting films are having their moment this summer with Fast Girl, Town of Runners and The Athlete. Do you think once the Olympics are over that there'll still be an interest in this genre? Should we start with you, John? I think there'll be a huge interest in, um, in sport after the Olympics. It's, uh, it tends to be the catalyst or the, the centre of, of interest for a lot of people. And I always remember back to uh, many, many years ago when we had uh, people at Linford Christie, Colin Jackson and Sally Gunnell, who were exactly world so. champions in, them, in themselves in, not back in 1993. And when they won gold medals, um, there were queues down the road from young people who wanted to get involved in sport. And I think that's an unbelievably positive message that the Olympics can send out yeah. to however many sports it is. It doesn't need to be just athletics. Um, that, you know, first of all, there is something amazing at the end of the road if you really are that good. But by the same token, there's also a message for those that aren't necessarily going to be champions or even or Olympians, but just want to have a bit of fun. And they can do uh, both by, in terms of the facilities that are going to be left uh, to be used um, and uh, also obviously the resources that uh, they're going to be invested in. Who else wants to answer that question? Sam, maybe. I mean, do you think, do you think, I mean, we talked earlier about the Olympics. Mm. If, if it hadn't been for the Olympics and perhaps in a couple of years, mm. what do you think the interest will be in, in this film and, and films like this? Well, I think if you look at, I mean, there's a lot, sport is such a strong subject to make a film about. I mean, you talk about even like Rocky or something, you know, it's yeah. not. Cool running. Yeah, there's, it's, sport is a way to look at people challenging themselves, going through mm. a life, personal, a drama in themselves. You know, I think the, that's why we watch sport anyway. And, and to make a film about it, there's so many great sporting films. I don't think it's just uh, going to stop once the Olympics goes, yeah. you know. I think it's always going to be a, a rich topic to look into. OK. Um, well, that brings us on to our first clip, which is a clip of uh, James in action, and it will just give you at home or at school uh, a sort of flavour, really, of James and what you're all about and how you got to where you are today in the Team GB. So enjoy this clip. I remember to this day being in my house in Catford. I was three years old watching Ben Johnson in Seoul. After the race finished, my mum turned the TV around like, to lay in my bed and I was crying. I was going, I want to watch the running. And she let me watch a little bit. And from that day, I always said I wanted to do that. And then it's weird because as soon as I started, I don't know, infant school, I was always quick. Young guys either go one way or the other in it. So like, a lot of my friends, when they were 16, 17, they started going down the wrong path. And I chose, obviously, athletics. It was quite quick discovering that he had a real talent and it was just purely to keep him off the street because of where we live. It can be quite... Um, there's lots of distractions. Hope you enjoyed that clip. This leads us nicely into our next question. James, can you tell us a bit about your emotional journey during the making of the film? Um, there's a lot of ups and downs. I think um, 
Going from my 2010 season, I had a pretty bad career threatening injury. Um, so going into 2011, I mean, as long as I recovered properly, which I did, I was, I was pretty much hungry because I knew what I could do. So having Sam jump on board and start filming the group, um, I thought, well, I'm going to have to start, start doing something this year. And the warm weather training went really well. Um, it's funny, funny enough you say that because two weeks before the trials last year, um, Sam actually filmed it, but it's not in the film. I ran a real bad race at Birmingham and um, I was pretty down about it. And I injured my leg that day as well. And then I suddenly during the race. Or? Nah, I was I was stretching the night after the race, and um, I kind of I thought, well, I could have put myself out of the, out of the world champs. Um, and it wasn't until like I'd say four or five days before the trials, where I actually started running fast again. And luckily enough, um, I had enough gas in the tank to come out and get my second place and make the world championships team. So I mean, so much emotions involved. You you, you can be on top of your game, think you're definitely going somewhere. And then you could be struck down by injury mm -hmm. or illness, and then everything can just fade. And I think that really comes across in the film that sense that, like, the tiniest thing can just mm. ruin everything. It's kind of a bit bleak at times. And yeah. It could all go so easily wrong. I mean, I've, I felt like when I started filming James, he, he was just on the edge of making something, making it. Mm. And, it and there was a bit of frustration. You know, because James has been working hard for so many years. So many setbacks. Yeah, well. and there's so many setbacks. So I think what come what the real high point in the film is when when you get to the end and well, I don't want to give the ending away, but I suppose you, you know. But it you realise what it means, mm. and it's very emotional. I think the important thing to remember: uh, a lot of people don't realise that. Uh, I mean, James went into the trials this year for the Olympics with. Um, exactly the right qualifying time down to the exact hundredth of a second. Hundredth of a second. And, <laughs> you know, people may not realise, it takes about a third of a second to blink. One thirtieth of that time slower, if James had run one thirtieth of that time slower, he wouldn't have qualified for the Olympics. One hundredth of a second can make that much difference, and that's what we're dealing with uh, all the time. Like crazy. John, how do you manage expectations and get the best performance out of your athletes? With huge difficulty. That's a great question. Um, when I started coaching James, I had hair, but um, <laughs> now I, um, you can see the results. But um, I think there's a lot that goes into coaching individual athletes, and the most important thing for a coach is to know the athlete, not, not only know the athlete as a person, but know the athlete's body and how it reacts to different training regimes. Uh, with James, I guess I had to get it right eventually, but uh, yeah. <laughs> over a period of years. But um, it really is a combination of so many things that goes into it. You have to make sure the athlete's head is right going into a training session, let alone a major competition. Mm -hmm. And for that, you need to be able to communicate. And uh, it's it's not just on the track. It, so I won't say it's 24/7, but it, it's it's a huge, great yeah. process. And uh, you know, athletes and coaches work together. Uh, a huge amount of their life mm. is put into preparation for the big moment. Um, Sam, as personal best was filmed over four years, did you find it interesting to watch the athletes grow? And how did you get them to open up in front of the camera? I think that's the most interesting part of it is that to, I think to develop as an athlete, you have to develop as a person, you have to change. And there's a massive change from when I started filming them, when they were young athletes to, to where they are now, um, you've got to overcome the, all the challenges that are kind of within yourself, I think. That, and you have to become a stronger, uh, more focused person. And that shows in every aspect of their life. I mean, they really, really changed. And I think in terms of opening up, there's a certain amount of trust that has to be there and because I'd been doing it for so many years there was a good good level mm. of trust there but I think it's also to do with the kind of questions you ask I think athletes are used to being asked certain things maybe and or quite a lot of the time people they're not people don't really know what they go through mm. so it's nice I've you know 
to ask them things that normally no, no one normally asks them, you get you get an Definitely, original like answer. Their families and their like home life and all yeah. those other things that get affected. I think. Yeah. It's quite interesting. There's lots of layers there that, that you can find out when you really dig behind the surface. Mm. Okay. Um, well, we were going to ask you a bit about the style of the film because obviously you use a lot of slow motion, which mm. I'm sure you get asked about quite a lot. And, mm -hmm there's a lot about speed in the film, but um, mm. before we do that, I just want to introduce the second clip, which is, um, again, a clip about kind of speed and, and how you use time. You were talking about, was it a hundredth of a second? Anyway, I'll let you watch the clip and we'll talk about speed afterwards. Dreams pivot on hundredths of seconds. If they go wrong, it can be disaster, it can be the end of the road for years of work, if it goes right, it can make you globally famous, it can make you a fortune, it'd be like winning the lottery. Yeah, I've watched this six times now, he really did get out well, bang, reacted really well. He's ahead of Picker in there, but then he got the mid-race, oh. Hundred of a second between James and the final. He'd have run faster in the final as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that clip. Um, so that clip uses the clock, and I just wanted to ask you about how you use the clock and, and how you use speed as a theme in the film. I guess it was a way of trying to communicate how what a knife edge this sport exists on the. As John said before, a hundredth of a second, which is nothing, can mean the difference. It was the difference between James going to the Olympics and not going to the Olympics. That is as life-changing as you can get. Mm. You know, these guys are... Um, it's all about time and trying to break through barriers. Time is always there, ticking. Uh, it's up to you to see how far you can yeah. push through it. Um, it's a very sort of simple, strong... Yeah, no, I thought getting, it worked really well. So time across. doesn't change, but um, athletes clearly do. Mm. So. Okay. Um, so we haven't got much time left, but we've had a couple of questions through on the Twitter, so I'm going to pass them over to Jess. So they've just come through during the clip. Um, I think the first one is for James, is it? Um, this is from Kofi. James, who was your sprinting idol or hero growing up? Hi, Kofi. Um, my sprinting idol growing up. It's got to be probably an Christie. Christie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously times change. Probably I looked at other athletes 90s. now, <laughs> but when I was a kid, he was the he was the man. He was the British number one Olympic champion. So it was only right that I'll be following the, the British, the best of British. Yeah, he's still doing pretty well today as well, isn't he? Still, he's coaching now. Still coaching. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, this one's to John. As a coach, have you noticed an upsurge? in young people taken up in athletics as a consequence of the Olympics being held in London? Great question. Um, yeah, I mean, there has, there has been a number of, uh, of young people that have come into sport as a result of the Olympics. Everybody's buzzing about it, and I think probably it started last year, actually, rather than this, and uh, clubs have sort of seen uh, a number more, you know, higher numbers of people wanting to join in and, uh, and have fun whether it's with a view to, as I said before, an Olympic career or not. And I think the value of sport is something that is fun to do and to take part in. Um, that It's a very strong message that the Olympics is, has and is continuing to convey. Great. Um, OK, so that's it for the Twitter questions. And yeah. uh, we've got to keep on with our normal questions. Um, how have you found how people responded to the film? People, the thing that I found really amazing was how moved emotionally people can get, and you sort of forget when you're in the middle of making it. Um, obviously, that's what you're trying to achieve, but because I watched it so many times and I, I end up not feeling those emotions, and then we yeah. show it to an audience who haven't seen it, people are really moved. People tell me they cry. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, and through it. So, that's really powerful and people 
we, in terms of kind of the Olympics, people say there's a certain amount of negativity about the Olympics, mm. and people says it makes them see a different side, which is the positive, the genuine positive side that comes from the athletes and what they're trying to the achieve. And, yeah, they're yeah. trying to achieve something very genuine. How, however, you know, all the stuff that's around it. Yeah, it was random. Yeah, also we, you know, people can complain about that. They can't complain about the the attitudes and the hard work and it's the hard, hard work, work exactly the hard work that's gone into to getting the athletes there so it's very inspiring positive vision I think of, of athletics which isn't a good thing to be showing before yeah this can only be a good thing okay um, well we're we're running out of time so I'm I'm just going to ask a very quick question and then Jess has got a, a cheesy question at the end. <laughs> but why did you dedicate the film to the youth of Great Britain? When I was editing the film, starting to edit it, was last summer, and if you remember last summer, there was the riots happened all across oh. Great Britain and there was a lot of negativity about what's going on in this country and, and young people yeah. and all young people care about is you know getting the right trainers and stealing TVs from short and yeah. I'd spent a year filming young people being more dedicated and focused than I'd ever seen so I just thought it was really important to it's underline good press. that and it's not all negative Definitely. and and also that when I was a kid I watched films that inspired me to yeah. do things I think films can be very uh, inspiring to, to young people in terms of your dreams and aspirations mm. so I just felt it was important change the way you think about things and the final question the final question do you think this film could be one of your personal bests <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I'd say up to now it is yeah it was a big challenge making it I think that's what a personal best it's about, it's about raising the bar of what you're yeah. capable of. So I'd never made a feature film before. I'd never had a film to go to cinema before. It's an amazing achievement. So it is as cheesy as it sounds. <laughs> it's Look personal. Look at personal success too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. OK, um, well, I think that's actually all we've got time for. So thank you very much to all the schools for tweeting in your questions and for watching. We really appreciate your time. And thank you, you guys. Thanks for taking time off the track to come in with us. And thanks to Sam for um, your time as well. Thank you. We appreciate it. Are thanks. you going to go back over to the stadium now? Or? <sighs> Probably got gym later. Gym yeah. tonight? Yeah. For how long? A couple of hours or something. A couple of hours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll just be on the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> and all the best with the Olympics. Thanks. Good luck. Thanks. Tune in tomorrow at 4 p.m. for a live interview with Jerry Rothwell, director of Town of Runners. Toodle pip. <laughs> Toodle pip.